Due to popular demand from our comments, I suppose the secret is out about Maynard, Texas. So in this video, we will be going over pretty much everything you'll need to know before moving to Maynard, Texas, assuming it is on your list of options within the greater Austin area as you're planning your big move. And if that's the reason you clicked on this video, stay tuned because we're getting after it right now. Hello again, everybody. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Frank, I am your host, and I'm part of a team at the award-winning JB Goodwin Brokerage right here in the fabulous Austin, Texas. Each and every week, we put out tons of new content, all in regards to living in Austin, Texas, whether it be pros and cons, vlog tours, comparisons of cities and states, and so much more. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel and ringing that little bell so that you're notified each and every time we put out a new video. In addition, we get reach outs all the time from people just like you who are in need of our help when relocating to this great city of Austin, Texas. We love finding that perfect place that fits the lifestyle and making your move as smooth as possible. But the only way we can do that is by you reaching out to us. So do not hesitate. Whether you're nine days away or 90, go ahead and shoot us a text, send us an email, give us a call any day of the week, any time of day. So at long last, yes, we are finally talking about Maynard, Texas. And for reference, in the year of 2018, it was ranked the seventh fastest growing suburb in the country. And in the year of 2019, it was ranked 20th as the best small suburb in the country as well. Yet despite this recent recognition and our experience as of late, Maynard just isn't that talked about. As buyers agents who focus on relocation, every so often our clients will be looking at the Cedar Parks of the world or the West Austins of the world and will say something along the lines of, well, they kind of have what we're looking for, but not exactly. We're really looking for this or for that. And so because it's been under the radar for such a long time, Maynard in our experience has been that place, that card we pull out of our sleeve and say, well, how about you check out this area? And then things really start to open up. Is it perfect? No, and we will be talking about that. But does it still have a lot to offer? The answer is yes, and we're getting after it right now. For starters, let's address perhaps its best attribute, which is going to be its proximity to downtown Austin. Maynard, Texas is approximately between 12 and 15 miles away from the downtown metro area. Similarly, it is going to be within an arm's reach of the tech corridor. So for the greater Austin area, a majority of people relocating here, barring those who work from home, are going to be based out of either downtown or the tech corridor. And if not those two, perhaps also based in Round Rock, which is also just a hop and a skip away from Maynard. So we're seeing that it is quite a perfect fit for those who don't want to have to pay for the downtown real estate or the central or north Austin real estate, which can be quite expensive. Now, quite frequently in the past, many of the clients we've helped have their eyes on Cedar Park, or they have their eyes on Leander, or they have their eyes on Georgetown, so on and so forth. Now, the downside to these areas is going to be either the average median home price or the distance from downtown. So for example, while Leander is perhaps the most affordable between Cedar Park or Georgetown or Round Rock, it is going to be between 20 and 30 minutes from the downtown metro area, maybe between 15 and 25 minutes from the tech corridor. Georgetown, of course, is going to be closer to 40 minutes. And although Cedar Park is pretty much within arm's reach of the tech corridor, the median home price in Cedar Park is going to be closer to half a million dollars. So if you either don't have a ton of money to spend on a new house, or you're not really too excited about a commute more than 20 or 30 minutes, naturally you're going to look at other options. And with Round Rock's median home price rapidly increasing, and with Pflugerville already being very well established, Maynard is very quickly becoming the number one choice. Now, depending on who you are, what your preferences are, what your tastes are, the next subject in this video is going to be either good or bad. And that's going to be the fact that Maynard is a very small town. Compared to its neighboring towns and suburbs, Maynard is quite underdeveloped. And if you look at it on the map, it really is going to be some gray surrounded by a ton of green, which is good for future developments and new built communities, but it is bad in terms of things to do in your day-to-day -day lives. So if you are someone who is relocating from perhaps one of the coasts and you are used to an abundance of things to do, 
you're going to be pretty bored in Maynard. It's not going to be like a Round Rock, which is now so developed that you have the largest indoor water park in the country, or Pflugerville, which has its own water park, or Georgetown that has its own town square, or even Leander, which is on the rise, with plans for a new domain called Northline or Leander Springs, which is going to be a lagoon, which has shops and restaurants. So the fact of the matter is Maynard right now is pretty much what Round Rock or Pflugerville were about 20 or 30 years ago, or perhaps what Leander was maybe 10 years ago. Is it going to be like this forever? Absolutely not. There are big plans for Maynard, which we will get to in this video, but as it currently stands, it is as small town suburbia as you can find. Now, to be fair, the good news, the bright side to all of this is that, as mentioned, you are close to downtown, you are close to the domain, and you're very close to Round Rock. So if you are dying for things to do, you can simply leave Maynard. But that is the truth of the matter. You have to leave Maynard. Now, since I mentioned it, let us naturally segue to the next subject in this video, and that is going to be the future plans for development that Maynard has. And for the record, I don't mean to insinuate that there's absolutely nothing in Maynard, because you do have a nice selection of neighborhoods as it currently stands, a nice variety. Some of them are going to be built around a golf course, others are going to have parks with splash pads and pools. And in addition to that, if you are relocating and you have a strong preference for new build homes, Maynard is going to have that in abundance because of its growth, because of its size, because of its trajectory. So yes, you have your selection of new builds, but if you are someone who prefers, for whatever reason, a previously owned home, it's not like you just have barns, you know what I mean? You have a nice number of options, a nice selection of houses to choose from. So while it does already offer pretty much everything you'd want with a residential home, new or previously owned, let's talk about perhaps the most exciting new development that Maynard has planned for its future. And that would be something called Wild Horse. It's going to be about 1,400 acres. It's going to have an abundance of retail. It's going to have offices. It's going to have two elementary schools. It's going to have parks. It's going to have yoga. It's going to have fitness, which for Maynard is going to be huge in regards to its diversity, in regards to its growth in population, in regards to its economy, so on and so forth. But that is the good news. The bad news, however, is that Maynard is still such a long time from seeing that vision materialize. It's not like it'll be ready and finished in the next six months or even in the next year. This is something that is going to take a long time to complete and something that they have just only barely started to work on as of now. So not to be redundant, but as it currently stands, as I mentioned, there just isn't that much to do right now, but the future is bright, which is really my larger point. Now, before moving on to the rest of this video, go ahead and drop a comment down below. Which areas in Austin do you have your eyes on? What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? What questions do you have for us? Go ahead and drop them all down below. We'd love to get involved with you guys. In addition to that, consider liking this video as it really helps our channel grow and tells us that we're doing a good enough job providing some value for you guys. And lastly, if there's anyone in your life who is planning a move to Austin, Texas and would like to learn more, go ahead and share our content with them and spread the good word. Now, moving right along, let us finally address one of its strongest attributes, and that's going to be Maynard's affordability. As mentioned, the median home price in Cedar Park, for example, is going to be closer to half a million. The median in Round Rock is going to be the mid 400s to half a million. The median in Georgetown, the same, so on and so forth. Now, with Maynard, its median is going to be approximately between 320 to $350,000, with your low end being as cheap as the mid 200s. So in addition to its distance from downtown, especially when compared to some of its rivaling suburbs, you now have affordability thrown in the mix that really makes Maynard such an optimal option. And what's interesting is that a lot of the options that you'll find in the twos or even the low threes are going to be new build homes. Of course, before you load them up with options, but what's interesting is that a lot of the previously owned homes are what are going to be a little bit more expensive, closer to the average median home price or even perhaps above it. And yes, for the record, if you are coming here with a boatload of money and you really wanna stretch that budget, of course, Maynard does have premium options. I believe the highest you can find right now is around the two million range, and that's basically going to get you a nice house with a ton of land, because again, it's very underdeveloped. Something else I'll mention though, can be viewed as both good 
and bad, and that would be Mainer's appreciation. It wasn't even two or three years ago that the average median home price in Mainer was actually in the 200,000s, and now, as I mentioned, between 320 and 350. So it's good because if you are a homeowner there or you are an investor, which by the way, there are numerous articles about how Mainer is one of the greatest long-term investments that you can choose to do. But yes, if you are a homeowner or an investor in the Mainer area or have have been for some time, surely you are already seeing such rapid appreciation to the point where right now, if you were to sell, you'd make quite a nice return. So I'm not only speaking to those of you who perhaps are looking to invest, but if you are someone who will want to upsize or downsize, or maybe you have a job that requires you to move every three, five, seven, ten years, look at Mainer because it is going to be quite a smart financial decision. Now the downside to all of this is that the time kind of is right now. Already we're seeing such a rapid appreciation that in the next one, two, three, five, ten years, its affordability that it really hangs its hat on is going to be a thing of the past. If it went from the low twos to the mid threes like that, you can only imagine the trajectory as it currently stands. Now, unfortunately, I do have to be brutally honest and keep it consistent with the next subject on this list, which is going to be the property taxes. If you are a longtime subscriber to this channel, there are two things you for sure know about me by now. One of them is that I don't sugarcoat or be BS anything because partly it's just who I am and also because when you're making such a big decision in your life you don't need some sleazy realtor lying to your face and the second thing you surely know about me by now is that I love and hate to talk about the property taxes. Truth of the matter is, one of the biggest reasons why so many people are flocking not only to Austin but to the state of Texas is going to be that bang for your buck affordability. Four or five hundred grand that might buy you 12 or 1400 square foot townhomes in Oregon or Washington or California or New York can buy you three, four or five bedrooms in the greater Austin area near a golf course with a pool, maybe with a theater room. And even though Austin is going to be the most expensive option in the state of Texas with an average median home price of just around $600,000. Even still, its surrounding areas are going to be significantly cheaper than most of your options on the coast. So while all of that is true, in addition to having no state income tax, Texas has to make its money somewhere. And that somewhere is going to be the property taxes. So if you're moving from a place where your property tax rate might be 1% or 1.5%, or I've even heard of 0.6, which blew my mind, in the Austin area, you can expect it to be at least 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, more commonly 2.5, 2.75, 2.8. And in the case of Manor, Texas, we have one of the worst property tax rates of all, and that's going to be approximately 2.9 or just about 3%. So while the appraised value might be relatively cheap, right? Let's say you get a house that is appraised for $350,000 and your tax rate is 2.5%, the example I like to use a lot, you're paying just shy of nine grand a year. So imagine you find 350, 450, 550 in Mainer, but your rate is going to be around 3%, you're going to be paying considerably more per year. I don't say it to deter you, I don't say it to dissuade you, to disenchant you, I say it just so you are aware when you are making such a big decision in your life. You can't have something like this blindside you when you're working with your lender, when you're getting your ducks in a row and figuring out what your overall budget is. Next, I'm going to touch on the subject of schools because the truth of the matter is a majority of you watching this who are relocating to not downtown, but the greater Austin area are going to be doing so with your families. So surely by now, if you've been doing your homework, you've heard of the Leander or the Round Rock Independent School Districts, which get amazing grades from niche.com. They serve between 30, 40, or 50,000 students, maintain superb graduation rates, SAT and ACT test scores. And the only other district that really gets the same amount of praise that isn't so large is going to be the Eanes Independent School District. However, the Eanes Independent School District is located around the Westlake area, a very well-off area with median home prices 
well into the millions. So where and how does the school district in Maynard fit into this equation? Well, they serve right around 10,000 students. So while it is small, it is still quite promising. Recently, it received the award District of Innovation. In other words, insinuating that despite its size, its trajectory is quite nice and has already gathered enough recognition and respect from the neighboring school districts and many of the school boards within the greater Austin area. Now you might have been doing your homework and perhaps have seen a less than amazing score slash grade by the likes of niche.com or one of these websites, but I wouldn't be too deflated because a lot of times these websites will grade the schools based on the average income, based on the size of the town and many other factors, which is why that smaller district I mentioned called Eanes despite its size has such good letter grades from these websites because its area is so nice and well off. So I'm not saying the schools in Maynard are going to be the best of the greater Austin area, but they're going to be more respectable and perhaps better than you might expect. Now the final subject I'll mention before we wrap, assuming I'm still talking to the families out there, is going to be the subject of crime and or safety. When it comes to Maynard, the crime statistics, the averages, the scores, all of the stuff that it gets on an abundance of websites that like to grade it are going to be pretty much average or actually even mediocre. Now, that's not to say that Maynard is an unsafe, dangerous place to live. Of course not. But it won't be of the same standard, perhaps compared to Hutto, which is surprisingly safe, or even Cedar Park. Now, are you going to be sleeping with one eye open? Probably not, but in the spirit of total transparency, I thought it would be worth mentioning in this video. And with Maynard still being such a small town, with it still being so underdeveloped, it's hard to pinpoint whether these statistics will remain the same on average, or if over time it will somehow resolve itself and increase in its safety. Unfortunately, I can't answer that. I don't have my crystal ball with me here today, but the more you know. So ultimately, Maynard might be perfect for you. It might fit your budget. It might fit your desired lifestyle. Just play some John Denver and chill in your backyard in a nice quiet town. You might be happy with where it's at right now and excited for its future growth. But maybe you have your eyes elsewhere. Maybe you want a place that's already more established. Maybe you want a place that's already more safe. Maybe you want a place that already has reputable schools that have expanded and exploded. You might want better public transportation. You might want better diversity. You might want to be further removed from the city or you might want to be even closer to it. So whether it is Maynard, whether it's West Austin, whether it's downtown Austin, whether it's Georgetown, so on and so forth, everything in between, that is what we are here for. We love learning about your lifestyle. We love placing you in that perfect spot with the right schools, with the right commute to work, with the right property tax rates. But the only way we can do that is again by you reaching out to us. So do not hesitate. Whether you're nine days away or 90, send us a text, shoot us an email, give us a call, any day of the week, any time of day. And as mentioned, we put out tons of new content each and every week, just like this one. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel and ringing that little bell so that you're notified each and every time we put out a new video. Consider liking this video as well as it really helps our channel grow and tells us that we're doing a good enough job providing some value for you. Comment down below with any agreements, disagreements, questions, opinions, we'd love to get involved. Share this with anyone you know in your life who might be wanting to learn more about Austin, Texas. And until the next one, you guys, my name is Frank. I am your host. This is Living in Austin, Texas, and we will absolutely catch you later.